city in the desert where the people are coming. Anywhere else in the world, it takes 20 years to set up a functioning community. We did it in months. It is now coming to real life. Thousands. Yeah. Most of them have relatives. Here. Yeah. Or and, neighbors or whatever. Yeah. And, and are her relatives in uh, Zatri or are they in the in the in the urban or where? And what made you come across? Why did you come here? 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 you may be going to Zatri camp? Uh -huh. And that's okay? Who would travel for up to two weeks through the desert with their kids to live in a, in a refugee camp if there was any other choice? Zatri's got 120,000 people in it. It's now the world's second largest refugee camp. It's a city, it's, uh, and these people will make the city even bigger tonight. My name's Andrew Harper, I'm head of UNHCR's Refugee Response in Jordan. And they have to walk across the desert, and sometimes they get lost. So they spend the first night here, second night here, come down here, third night here, then they go to Zartri, which is here. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. No, tell me, we have the operations room going as soon as possible. My name is Kilian Kleinschmidt, I'm the manager of Zatri Camp. They call me the mayor of Zatri, but I'm also simply the boss. So I welcome you to Zatri Town, 120,000 people in 530 hectares. They came in last year, July 29th, 2012, settling down here in what has become today the old town in the west part, the downtown, the slum. This is where everything is happening. It's about 8.3 kilometers all around. We have a ring road. We have other asphalted road in the middle. Three and a half kilometers from west to east. It's a big place. But it's not anymore a little refugee camp in the middle of the desert. It has become a city. Like everywhere in the world, these refugees were very angry people because they lost their homes, they lost family members. There's a lot of suffering in the conflict in Syria. But also, there are people with an incredible initiative, with an incredible capacity to change the environment. They don't like the way of how we, we put them down. They don't what like the way them? of how we put them in rows, so they put them in little compounds. They're traders, they're people who have all their lives and their history have been doing trading. So it's very natural that they set up shops. It's very, very logical for them that anything they touch, they transform into business. So how much does it cost? What? A, a, a cup. A cup. Yeah. Uh, 25. Uh, when we come back, I'll grab one. Welcome, welcome everybody. One dinar and how much? Like that? That's all? That's just cheaper than in a month. Here we see a water tank being a private water tank. 8% of the camp inhabitants have a private water tank. Either they bought it or they, uh, they, they, they stole it actually from uh, communal facilities. They have destroyed a lot. They have stolen a lot. Now, have they stolen it or have they privatized it? I think they have privatized it. Wow. Okay, Kuwaiti, Oman. Oh, 
Oh, the real bathroom. What is that? Do they not wear the light? Wow. It's the shower. <laughs> so they're saying, well, I don't want your communal toilet. I want my private one. So I'm taking the materials from your communal toilet and just moving it a few meters and I make it to a private toilet. So you will find everywhere the bits and pieces of the public toilets transformed into private bathrooms. And that's where we started building up the vision that there we're building a city. We said, well, we also will build a city. So we were trying to bring together our vision, their vision and our vision. So we're now converging it, we're bringing it to one. It becomes complicated. I did not meet you yet. This is a beautiful example of how it should not be. If we don't work together, who is going to do this?